ladies and gentlemen. I want to family and warmly welcome you all to this great, joyful occasion. Today, we are celebrating our own Miss Kamsi Stella Amadi. Who just returned from England, where she sojourned for two years in pursuit of academic excellence. Miss Kamsi made a first class in law, and after her law school, she obtained scholarship to study her master's degree, which she accomplished with distinction. A round of applause for her. Today, she is back to her fatherland, well equipped to serve, to unleash her experience, knowledge, brilliance, education, to better the lot of this society of ours. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want you all to join me. Put your hands together to welcome the delectable Miss Kanzi. Thank you. Thank you so much. You all know that Uche here is an orator and a very good one at that. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you once again for making this party. Uh, let me start tonight by thanking my mom, my delectable, beautiful mom, my irreplaceable mother, and my sister, my unbelievable sister. You all know her in Kechi, and her um, equally handsome husband, Obina. And all our beautiful friends here today, you all took time out of your busy schedules to be with us. I just want to thank you and appreciate you. Um, let me start by saying that I, I am honored, I am totally honored and humbled by this wonderful reception that you all have organized for me. And I cannot um, say how excited I am tonight. You have given me so much so much support and and love that i i feel like i'm indebted to you all and to pay back i have decided to render my services to humanity i have actually decided to open up my chambers and help the less privileged and the suffering in our society today especially the widows thank you thank you so much you all agree with me that our widows need help and attention. Therefore, I, I intend to do this free of charge and give all that I can give to them. And as the information comes out to the public, of course, you will be the first to know. So I want to once again thank you so much for your support and your love. But I will not end the speech tonight without thanking my adorable one, my partner, my lover, my friend, you're my best friend, my lover, my partner. <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you. I love you. Thank you. Oh, no, oh, no. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. I want you to come over and cut this cake. Celebration cake. So, I'm going to invite. Join me in the celebration okay, with mom. I was going to call you, but she already jumped up. Just join anyway. <laughs> and of course, my darling here. Yeah. Alright? Alright, baby. I will spell up your name. I want you to call this game. Okay. Ready? <laughs> K. Mm -hmm. A. M. S. I. I. Cheers, Cheers. 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 Cheers.
I can see that you are really serious about this NGO program. Yes, mom, I am. Mom, it's a vision that I have nurtured for years and I will not be fulfilled if I don't accomplish it. I would have thought that now that you're through with your education, you will probably get a job with one of those big chambers, make some money and then get married. Later you can, you can think of this one. On the contrary, mom. This is the time to go for it. Imagine when I get married, mom. I will be laden with a lot of family responsibilities. My dear, all your life you've concentrated so much on having a good education. and making a wonderful career. Now that you're supposed to relax. You're busy championing other people's cause. When are you going to think about you, yourself? When? Mom, let me take your mind back a little. Do you remember all that we went through in the hands of Uncle Oji and his sisters? After Dad died, do you remember? Or is it with his so-called friends? Mom, a lot of women going through the same horrifying experiences mom every day every single day a lot of women are dying in silence because they have no one to speak for them no one to fight for them mom imagine if you had this imagine please mom this is something that I must do. Please. Okay. I can see that you're bent on doing this. But my daughter, you have to be careful. You have to be very, very careful. Those people that maltreat widows, they are vicious, dangerous. Some of them are even diabolical. Please, my dear. I don't want any harm to come to you. Hmm? Oh, yes. um, I've carefully thought about this. And mom, I will be very careful. All I need from you is your total support. And your prayers. Of course, you know I will always support you. I've been praying for you. And I will continue to pray for you. And I know that our Heavenly Father will never let any harm come to you. Amen. He will protect you for me. Amen. Hmm? My husband. My husband, your father. Wherever he is, I know he's not sleeping. It's been 10 years, over 10 years since we lost dad. You cannot continue like this. <sighs> I will be fine, okay? I have to go to bed now. I have a very tedious press review in the morning. Damn. Yes. Okay. I don't want you to cry anymore. It's okay. And I want you to take care of yourself. Okay. It's been good night. Mm -hmm. Good night. Good night. Good night. Take from me.
My foundation is called Hope for the Hopeless Foundation because that's exactly what it is meant to do. There are a lot of people dying in silence in this country because they cannot afford the cost of hiring a lawyer. My foundation will provide free legal and counseling services to all oppressed people everywhere in the country today, especially the widows. Why widows? Oh, widows. Because they are the ones going through the most harrowing experiences at the death of their spouse for no fault of theirs. Many of them are accused falsely. Many of them are dispossessed of their things, their monies, their homes, their properties, even their children. I want to be their advocate. I want to be their voice. Now tell me, is this decision born out of personal experience or just a passion? A little of both. My personal experience aroused the passion in me. And don't you think you're too young to undertake such responsibility? <laughs> no, I don't think so. Age has absolutely nothing to do with this. I rather would say I have the knowledge and the expertise. Do not forget that I did family law for my master's degree. And how do you hope to finance this project, considering the fact that services will be free? Thank you very much. That is a very good question. I have written series of letters to donor agencies abroad in more developed countries, especially Europe and America, and I am positive that we'll get good responses very soon. But let me also use this opportunity to appeal to those of us listening to me today. I'm talking about philanthropists, good and well-meaning Nigerians. Please, I would love for you to donate generously to this. The girl I told you about. No. You told me your fiancée was in London. Yes, Daddy. She got back a fortnight ago from London after her studies. She made a distinction in her master degree. I see. So, what is she doing on TV? She's talking well, about her NGO. You have heard it from the young over the hopeless foundation. I think she wants to organize some kind of free legal service to widows and oppressed. Well, um, that's quite ambitious. Sir. And you say she's your fiancé? Are you sure you can handle her? Thank you, Miss Kamsi, for this. You know, yes, do you have the power and courage? Don't you know that all these women that appear on TV to talk sensibly are senseless and impossible at home? Daddy Kamsi is a humble person, a down-to-earth kind of person, okay? So probably maybe I'll invite her over very soon so that she will meet you. That's if you permit me. That's, that's all right. Let's let's go. An advocate, Miss Kamsi Amadi, founder of the Hope for the Hopeless Foundation. If you are a displaced person, a victim of injustice, persecution, you now have a voice. Hope for the Hopeless Foundation is at your service. Thank you, Miss Kamsi, for being here. Thank you so much. So let me use this opportunity to tell our viewers at home where they can reach us. Our website is www hopeforthehopelessfoundation.org or you can come to number 23 Mafoluku Street, Surulere. Thank you very much. I meticulously chose the three of you from the list of people that applied for this job because I believe that each and every one of you seated right in front of me now has the conviction, the passion and the drive for this cause as much as I have. But let me warn you, this course is not going to be an easy one. The journey is not going to be smooth all the time. It is not going to be a walkover. There's plenty of work to be done. But I believe in it. I know I made the right choices. I know that each and every one of you will dedicate themselves to this course. Are you ready? 
Yes, we are. Are you really ready to toil with me? Sure. You're sure you're ready? Sure, yeah. Good. You see, I personally applied because this is something I feel strongly about. My mother died as a result of the poisonous liquid she was forced to drink at my father's death. We were very young and helpless. We couldn't do anything. To tell the truth, my learned colleagues, I am yet to overcome the trauma. My aunt was a victim. She's in a psychiatric home today as a result of the torture she went through at her husband's death. Well, I've heard of the terrible things that we just go through. That's why I applied for the job. And it's obvious that's why I'm here. You know, share my sympathy with everyone of us here. And you can see, everyone here has had at least an experience or knows someone who's had a similar experience. So you know what I'm talking about. You know that these people need help. And how best to help them than to fight for them, to advocate for them, to use what you have to fight that cause. Like I said earlier, it is not going to be an easy job. But we will do it. And we will win. We will excel. I need you to be compassionate. We need to be extremely focused. Treat everyone that walks through that door like family. As soon as they see you, look into your eyes and speak with you. Let them become your own. Feel their pain. Because now they have you alone. They trust you. They believe in you. Before I go any further, is there anyone who has anything else to say? Excuse me. Yes, please. Let's be very realistic. People can get very desperate and physical. Is there a backup plan for our security? I just want to know honestly. Good question. Kate just asked if there is any backup plan for security. Because we are going to be wrestling with people who think that the properties are rightfully theirs according to culture against the videos that we are fighting for, right? Yes. Good. No, there is no physical security. Our security lies in our power. The power of our profession. The right to know. The knowledge that we have. So, we will not have any physical battles or scuffles. We will fight our cases in court. And we will win them too. Yes. <laughs> All right, having said all that, I need you all to get to work immediately because as I speak with you, we already have enough cases waiting for our attention. And you all know that we all need to work very hard so that our allowances can be paid. Very important. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much for your diligence. And please, once again, welcome. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, Kate, just the please. Can I see you? Sure. Um, This is a little bit critical. Why is that? How different. Mm. Actually, she's been married to this man. She was married to this man for over six years.
need the car key from her. Please, please, just calm down. Tell her to give me the car key right now. You I want the car key right now. What is the problem? Let her produce all her father's money and property, or else we'll deal with her ruthlessly. <laughs> she was one not to come into our family. But she went ahead and married her father. Now we know why. She has killed the old man. And she wants to take away everything. That cannot happen. A second wife has no inheritance. Give me the car keys or... Do you have <laughs> in your possession anything that rightfully belongs? Nothing. <laughs> I married their father after their mother died. <laughs> Two years into our marriage, my husband had stroke. <laughs> For three years, I was carrying him from one hospital to the other. Finally, he gave up at the teaching hospital. None of them cared. I'll slap you. None of them cared. None of them cared. Now they're asking me to, to bring up what belongs to you. When is his own money, whatever he had, was spent on his medical bills. I don't even have enough to take care of my son. <laughs> I'll stop you now. Please, please, stop. You cannot do that. You are not allowed to do that. Look, gentlemen. This lady has the right to defend herself and state her own case just like you have. Fighting and bickering right now will change nothing. You will achieve nothing and it will solve nothing. This is an easy case. Very easy case. Please. I want you to come. Your father needed company in his later years. That is why he married your stepmom. Unfortunately, he fell ill. And he died. Look, your stepmom stayed with him throughout all his turmoil to the last hour. Didn't she? I remember that. Look, if you have ever taken care of a sick person for even one week, just one week, then you will appreciate how difficult it is to take care of one for three years. How is that our concern? Is she not the one who agreed to marry him? If he wasn't sick, wouldn't she be enjoying? Would she have remembered us? Is that the problem? That she agreed to marry your father? That is besides the point. The point here is your father had stroke. And she tried everything she humanly could to assist him, to help him. But unfortunately, he died. God's will prevailed. How is that her fault? Lawyer, I don't get you. Are you saying we are living here without that rover? No way now. That's my favorite car. I'm not living here without our car. I'm not. They've taken all the cars away. The Mercedes Benz, the Land Cruiser, and the others. This is just the only car I have now. And it was a wedding present from my husband. Please don't let them take it away from me. Please. Please. So. You now have the girls to challenge me, right? Okay, fine, no problem. But we shall see. We shall see. We shall see. Look, if the key to that rover is your problem, I can ask her to give it to you right now. That'll be fine. Oh, but let me quickly remind you. 
that if she decides to press for charges and takes it to court, the judge will most likely ask you to return the key to that rover. The other keys to the other cars and probably all the properties in your possession so that it can be appropriately administered. Impossible! My own father's property. Her husband's property too. Our father's property. Her husband's property too. Look, she is your stepmom. She was legally married to your father. In law, that means she has equal consideration as the children of the deceased. You can go and consult with your lawyer if you doubt me. Gentlemen, imagine the situation. Just imagine this. I know that you're a matured man. You probably have your girlfriend right now that you want to get married to. Imagine a beautiful girl that you have gone out with for a long time. You decided to get married to because you love from the depth of your heart. And then God forbid something happens to you. How would you feel if somebody treated her in this manner? Think about it. You toiled with this lady. About it. Look, give your stepmom some space. Give her breathing space to mourn her husband, your father, in dignity. Give her some space to train her child, your half sister, so that I can. At least your father can look down and be happy. Look at his family living peacefully. You can achieve this. You don't have to fight. Don't put your family to shame. Nobody has to be greedy. You can all live in peace. It's achievable. you transfer all your documents, then program your organization such that only you can have a coach to assess your program. <laughs> Hot head. <laughs> the engineer extraordinary. 
You know, sometimes I wonder why I have no even Uh-uh, uh-uh. No, baby, you can't afford to pay. Uche, don't tell me I can't afford to pay you. Baby, Name the you price. can't. Name your price, Uche. What is it? Huh? Uh -huh. Name your price, Uche. like what you see. No, I like what I see. Okay. <laughs> you know, I, I just discovered something about you. you know, what is that? You're, you're quite different from your sister. <laughs> yes. Hmm. You know, she's too cold and too serious. <laughs> but you, you're more relaxed and even more appealing. In fact, Sexy. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Leave me alone. You think I'll fall for your sweet tongue? Look, I'm not sweet tonguing you, baby. I love you. I think about you every moment of my life. <laughs> well, now stop taking your midnight call. Because that uh, is reserved for my fiancé alone and he's beginning to suspect. Oh, please. Let him suspect. In fact, let him know. Yeah. And what has he to offer you anyway? <laughs> my only problem is your mother. The very day that I succeed in convincing her, that same day I'm getting married to you. <laughs> mm? Cool. Mm. You don't know how notorious you are with women in this town. In fact, I heard this place is a slaughterhouse. Ah, oh, come on, IJ. Don't tell me you believe those stupid talk from all those envious people around me. Yes. Look, mature people judge others by what they see or experience, not by what others say about them all. No. Well, there's no smoke without fire. Come on, IJ. Look! Okay, just check me out. Huh? I, I'm handsome. And as you can see, I'm loaded. I'm rich. So girls are bound to flock around me. But believe me, that doesn't mean that I did them. Hmm? Alright, baby. The only solution to this is that you settle down with me quickly. So that all this rumor will stop. But you know my sister will be very mad at me. For what? Because you're living your life? Oh, come on, baby. Don't tell me you think like a baby. Hmm? Well, you've not offered me anything since I came here. Oh I mean, I've stayed for a while and you've not cared to ask me what I want. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. My bad. Okay, I'm so so sorry. But you know what? There is a better drink in my room. So we'll go up in my room and party. Okay? Come Your on. bedroom? Yeah! Oh no, no. Let's oh, not come wash on, this. sweet. What are you uh, talking about? Uh, oh, oh, oh wait, angel. Let's not wash this. I mean, I I think it's time I um, 
It's time you go. I, I, I should be on my way now. Oh, no, 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 no. IJ, you're just getting to my house. Huh? You've not spent time. Okay? Know, but... Look, it's oh. going to be hard. Okay? Let's <laughs> okay, just but... go catch some no, fun. No, no. Hmm? Hmm? Let's not watch um, this. Okay, okay, okay. okay but... I know, I know what you time. want. There's still time. There's still time for this, okay? Let's not rush it. Hmm? Okay. Okay. All right, then. <laughs> Get you drink. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but there are better drinks in my room. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll be fine here. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Get me. Yeah. That's our President Bruce. Hmm. I know you're gonna like it. Let's try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Try it. <laughs> No alcohol content. the money you promised me. Oh, baby, what's the rush? Don't tell me you doubt my capability. No, but you promised me now. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Please, I'm um, really tired for everyone here. They would love to hear. thousand naira? Exactly. <laughs> that is just for a start. Oh God! Thank you! Thank you! <laughs> Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So, so let's go. Okay, okay. <laughs> actually saying is that um, what happened between me and Olivia was not my fault yes because I tried my best but she never had time for me and that is why the relationship couldn't work out in fact the relationship died a natural death Sylvester I'm so surprised you're sounding so casually about this matter you messed up my daughter and you abandoned her no no ma I didn't abandon Olivia. I mean, it wasn't just working out. If the relationship wasn't working for three years, three years in a woman's life is too long. Well, thank God Olivia is married now. Well, yeah, thank God she's married. But uh, that is because she had more time for that guy than she had for me. And that's why our relationship couldn't work out. Do I, I had more to offer. I, I, I had more to offer. Yes, because I'm far more handsome. I'm richer. I'm far richer than that guy. Because I'm sure he's still a salary-based worker. That's exactly the problem with you. You want every woman to prostrate at your feet because you are rich. A woman needs more than money. A woman needs care and attention. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're right. And, uh... Uh, yes, I, I will adjust to that. And that is why I want to make it all up with Ijoma. What do you mean? Um, uh, I, I... I want to marry Ijoma. Jesus. And um, I've already discussed it with her. Please, let's end this discussion. Mm -hmm. I have something very important to do in the kitchen. I'll see you some other time. Even I 
sent you a petition earlier on that I got from oh, 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 you are the one that invited me to your office. You asked me to come and see you in your office? <laughs> Insult! What girl like you invited me? For what? Don't you know I am a chief? Exactly the reason why I decided to come by myself to see you. You see, um, chief, I... Uh, so what is your problem? You can see I am on my way out. Um, Chief, I actually got a petition about you from your sister-in-law, that's your late brother's wife, Evelyn. She alleged that you confiscated your late brother's properties from her. That's from her and her children. You see... She is an idiot, bad woman. A common woman will marry into her family, claims that the house belongs to her. <laughs> oh, that is why she killed my brother, eh? So that she can claim all his monies and properties. She has sent her wrong motor. <laughs> she has sent her wrong motor. Look, I was the one carrying pot of wine when we went to Maria. Did she tell you that too? Actually, um, Chief Timothy, let me tell it to you right now. Your late brother's wife is actually the next of kin to his properties and all his estates. That by law means that she is the rightful and legal one to administer his properties. Look, look, before I close my eyes, you have taken yourself out of my presence. All right, Chief, maybe this is not a good time. Maybe I could come back and explain this to you more and then we can get to talk about it. It's get out of my sight before I invite my boys to descend on you. Look, lawyer or no lawyer, <laughs> they will beat awkward seats out of your eyes. After all, you trespass on my property and endanger my life. You think I don't know law? Huh? Get out! Okay. You can have it your way. I'll see you. Get out! 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 You had to open the gate for this guy. Okay, get out! Get, get out! What kind of nonsense is this? Get out! My lord, I hereby call on my first witness in this case, Mr. Ikem Okafo. He was the driver to the deceased, Mr. Daniel Ogwara, for seven years. Mr. Ikem Okafo. That all evidence she will give will be the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Yes, my lord. Mr. Ikem, you were the driver to the deceased for seven years? Yes, my lord. You drove him to the time of his death? Exactly, my lord. Can you tell this honorable court what the relationship was like between the couple? God only my lord. A perfect marriage. That was why I stayed so long as a family driver and lord. What was the relationship like between the deceased and his brother Timothy, the defendant? Objection, my lord. 
The witness is not a member of the family, so he is not competent to speak on the subject. Objection sustained. Prosecution, rephrase your question. As a pleasure, my lord, I will rephrase my question. Mr. Ikem, from your observation, as the family driver for seven years, what was the relationship like between the disease and his brother Timothy? Was it cordial? Not at all. Anytime Mr. Timothy visited, it was always wonderful. Last time he visited, two years ago, he told me that he says, Before I was a high guy, various dangerous weapons. Now, Mr. Ikem, you were in the house the day Mr. Timothy came to eject my client, Mrs. Evelyn, and her two little children. Can you reveal to this court what you saw? Barbaric art, my lord. He came with a team of thoughts. I asked my madam to produce the house documents, and my madam said she doesn't know where those documents were. They beat her up and threw her out of the house with the children, my lord. I have no further questions, my lord. Any examination? Yes, my lord. Now, Mr. Ikem, how much did this woman offer you? that were around you standing before us on that oath and to lie before this honorable court. Objection, my lord. My learned colleague is harassing my witness with baseless speculations. Objection sustained. Defense, restrict yourself to the subject matter of this case. What was the relationship with Mrs. Evelyn Udwaham, your master's wife? Call her, my lord. Good. Your relationship was so cordial that you were having an affair, right? Objection, my lord. Objection sustained. Defense, restrict yourself to the subject matter of this case. My lord, I'm trying to establish an important connection with this case. I'm reliably informed that the plaintiff, Mrs. Evelyn Udwaha, and Mr. Inkem, the driver, were lovers. They conspired and killed the diseased so that they will have a few days. Order! Order! My lord. I call on Mr. F. A. Udwana as my first witness. Mr. F. A. Udwana, what is your relationship with the diseased Daniel Udwana? And my uncle is a very good man. I stayed with him for two years. And what was that marriage like in those days? Were they living in peace? Oh, yeah. Like at a cafe every day. Sure, I thought about my wife. Did the wife ever threaten to kill the husband? And that's why they asked. Every day talk, every day worry. She even talk and say she could poison her. And do you think your uncle died a natural death? Natural talk. That you do witchcraft. Woman just send a heart attack. Man just die once. Did you ever observe any extramarital affairs on the part of the woman? Hmm. You asked if the woman the waka. That one a small thing. Ah, now waka waka woman. She don't even contest me. I don't do. Because I'm my own wife. So that's why I don't want to do that. That will be all for now, my lord. Mr. Ife Udwala. You claimed that the couple quarreled and fought all the time. Can you mention at least once? Which kind of person would this Answer the question and don't make that remark here again, or else I charge you for content of court. I to remember that every day that happens. You claim that the plaintiff 
was always sleeping around. Can you mention at least one of those that she had an affair with? I don't fit to know, man. I don't look at it. Timothy, you shouldn't be visiting my office when your case is in court. At least not without your lawyer. So I won't sit down, huh? Eh? A man has come for such a man. I won't sit. Look, I want us to settle this case. I will give that woman 500,000 naira so that she can stop disturbing me. I visited your house so that we could settle this case amicably. Do you remember? But what did you do? You humiliated me. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Fimoti. It is too late. Nothing is too late. Case just started. Any proposition to settle this case out of court can only be done by your lawyer, Mr. Fimoti, not you. Oh, that man. You got that one a lawyer? Forget about that man! His father wasted money sending him to school. Look, let me make it 600,000 naira. You know, it is not even within your powers to offer that woman any kind of settlement within her own estate. The law recognizes her, the wife of the deceased, before you. All this woman just wants is to settle down with her children in her husband's house and take care of them. We are practically saying the same thing. Look, she got her a flat and live with her children. Is that what you really want for your late brother's wife and children? Your late brother left a mansion for his family and you want his children to be cramped up in a little flat? Really? Uh, okay, uh, let us do it this way. Mm -hmm. uh, let me give you that money mm -hmm. so that you forget about this woman and uh, you become my own lawyer. <laughs> you know, you know, you know how it is. <laughs> 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 Mr. Fimuti, uh -huh. get out of my office. I am through with you. I will see you in court. Oh. Okay. So you 
think you can win this case against me? Huh? You are dreaming. You think law is about speaking supreme, supreme, supreme? By the time I finish pressing my buttons, hmm, you will be disgraced. And then you will wake up from your dream. If you do not leave my office right now, Mr. Fimuti, I will call the police. Like I said earlier, I am through with you and I will see you in court and bring your lawyer with you. So a small girl like you has no respect, huh? Okay. You see? I will leave. Hmm? But surely, I will deal with you. See you in court too. My father was a great merchant and his father was a great wrestler. So our family is a great family. Yeah, so may I know who is your father? Oh, my father is Mr. Madi Late. He died uh, 10 years ago. We were quite young then. Um, my mom. She's still alive, Mrs. Amadi. She's a businesswoman. She imports uh, fabrics. You know. And I have two younger ones, a girl and a boy. I see. That's about it. I see. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, when my son presented a profile, I told him that you had the right choice. You don't want uh, weak legs to contaminate our gene. Oh. <laughs> Our family is just an average one, really. Uh, perhaps. Uh, anyway, I can see that you're great among the average. Um, you have my blessings. Whenever you are ready to tie the knots, I'll be there for you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Jason. One more thing. I will support your foundation with an initial sum of two million naira. Daddy! Oh, this is great. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Daddy. <laughs> Thank That's you. Yes. You know, like I said, ours is a great family, so I support great ideas. Pick up the check tomorrow morning in my office. Thank you so much, sir. Well, let me allow you to enjoy yourselves. Aha, that reminds me. I heard about your case with that fool, Timothy. I know him very well. He's a dangerous vagabond. In case he threatens you again, just tell him that you are my future daughter-in-law. <laughs> and he will shut up. Thank you, sir. Enjoy yourselves. Yeah, thank you so much. Sir. Thank you very much, Aziz. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what? You should have told me. I didn't tell him anything. Gee, so how did he you know? I don't know. He dreamt about it? You know about oh, it. Oh, he saw it in the picture? Okay. Oh, come on, baby. You know I will always watch your back. Come on, I want to show you something, right? Come on. Get up. Get up. After carefully going through all the facts of this case submitted by both counsel, and thoroughly scrutinizing all evidence and testimonies of the witnesses, I am left with no doubt that the plaintiff's case has merit. I therefore rule as follows. One, that the defendant, Timothy Udwahan, shall with immediate effect vacate the said property and hand over the keys and valuables to the plaintiff, Mrs. Evelyn Udwahan, the rightful heir, 
that the defendant shall not under any circumstance enter the said property without leave of the court or permission of the plaintiff. Any violation of this shall be viewed as contempt of court and punished accordingly. 3. That all transactions heated to by the defendant regarding the deceased properties are hereby nullified as he had no local standing to do so. Anyone who purchased such properties like buses did so at his or her own peril. The plaintiff, Mrs. Uduama, is hereby empowered to recover such properties without any encumbrance whatsoever. Four, the plaintiff is hereby granted leave to sue the defendant for assault and battery in a separate case. Finally, the sum of 100,000 Naira is hereby awarded to the plaintiff, Mrs. Evelyn Udwaha, as damages for the defendant's wickedness and reckless action against her. The court shall rise. God! No matter your high position, if now you they oppress the nation, I have come to use my profession to give my people liberation. I don't come to deliver the oppressed people. I don't come mm. to put a smile on the face of we do. How do you feel near your first? Case. Actually, this is not our first case. We've had several other cases that we have settled out of court. But unfortunately, this case came to court because um, our defendant was not cooperating. So how challenging was the case? Very challenging. It was um, extremely challenging. I mean, come on, you, you realize with me that um, nobody wants to give up a right of ownership or, you know, um, hand over properties without a good fight. But we were up to the task. We were up to the task. Well, thank you for the clarification. So how do you feel? I feel great. I feel extremely happy. My confidence is boosted. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so what do you have to say to the oppressed widow in the society? Oh, I want to say to the oppressed widows to come out. I want them all to come out and speak. I want them to know that they don't have to be dehumanized anymore. They are human beings too. And they have rights. And we are here to fight for their rights with them. We are here to carry their cross for them. We want them to come out and speak. Because if Those you do not come are, out and speak, nobody can hear you. Now, we shall appeal this judgment. I, 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 I've um, lent... Um, I've Leave lent me alone! <laughs> After all the money you collected, eh? you came back here to speak. Is and was. Look at you. Look at you. That small girl won you. <laughs> you are not even ashamed to talk. What nonsense are you talking about? Huh? I did my very best to save you from a very bad situation. But what do you expect? The court would congratulate you for all your blunders. Oh, this hungry oh, speed joking. and charge and pay lawyer. That is if I don't get a better lawyer to get on with my money. Huh? You, 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 possibly get married now. I still need a little more time. You know, I need time for the NGO, NGO to settle down properly. But I thought you're properly settled now. No, I'm not. I just won my first case ever and there's a lot of pressure on me now. You know, petitions are coming in from right, left, center, everywhere. I need time to get things sorted out. I don't want the pressure at work right now to interfere with our lives. On the contrary, sweetheart. Don't you think if your NGO gets bigger than it is now, you will no longer have time for me? Of course not. I'm working very hard right now. I'm trying the best I can to structure the NGO. Very soon, I mean, you know, I have more hands and everybody doing what. And then I will not necessarily be there personally anymore. Then I will have enough time for you and the family. I don't want the pressure at work to interfere with our life. Is it that wise, sir? You said so. But at least we have to make it first. Listen, baby, you know now that you are in a moment. I don't want all these good to come and take you away 
Jealousy. <laughs> don't worry, darling. Kemsey has eyes for only you, sweetheart. And you know I love you so much. Love you too, darling. I'm a lawyer, remember? I don't lie. <laughs> Oh, come on, <laughs> I don't lie. What's wrong with you? You left me all boy for the past two days now. You're neither picking my calls nor returning them. You don't sound your usual self. Is anything the matter? I should see you by 8 p.m. tonight. Okay, there. Bye. I know and I admit that Uche is a wonderful, wonderful guy. But this is not the appropriate time to settle down. And trust me, I will settle down at the appropriate time. And when is the appropriate time? I've always told you that a woman is like flower. I mean, you need to make his wife the sun shines. Eh? When are you going to try to settle down, Mom? Really, tell me for nobody, my dear. You know the enormous kind of responsibility I'm carrying right now. It is like a baby. I need to nurture it. And I need a lot of time. I cannot can has been beating and molesting me since yesterday. Beating you? What did you do to him? Obina has started sleeping around again. Huh. I confronted him and he had the F entry to beat me up. I'm not going back home. Why should Obina do this? I mean, this is still too early. People have hardly settled down in this marriage. Mama, it is over. I am not going back to that house. Oh, my daughter, take it easy. Hmm? I've always told you that Marriage is not a bed of roses. Hmm? You know, okay. by the way, Nkechi, how, how are you sure he's actually sleeping around? I mean, did you catch him with any girls? You see what I'll say? There's a way you put address issues in this house that I don't like. Mama, are you seeing it now? Am I supposed to wait until I catch him red handed? Don't I have ears? Ah! Mama, you need to see the kind of text messages those evil girls sent to his phone. He doesn't sleep at midnight, they don't let him rest. All I know is that he's cheated on me and he cannot deny it. But you know the kind of job your husband does. You know he's an agent. And all these models are just going to get his attention. You know that, don't you? Oh. Most of the text messages are about appointments in the hotel. Is that also part of the job? Look, Nkechi, if all you have against him right now are messages you have read in his phone, text messages, or hearsay, then you have no case. No case whatsoever. And as... An advice from me to you, Nkechi, you need to stop reading his text messages. It would only cause you heartache. Wait, excuse me. Hmm, Mama, wait. Whose side are you on? No, I'm just asking. I want to know whose side you're on. Me. Because if I don't read his text messages, and I don't sneak into his wardrobe to see what and what is in there, how am I supposed to know what he's doing there? And why do you need to know what he's doing outside? Nkechi, why do you need to know what he's doing out there? Really? You need to go out there and find out. Anything trusted and tested marriage anywhere in the world thrives only on understanding loads of love and trust. Nkechi, 
Trust. Absolute trust. Mm. <laughs> I think there's a mix-up here. <laughs> Wait. I mean, are you lecturing me about marriage? There we go. No, I'm asking you. Because you're... Anyway, I didn't come home to take blames or lay blames on anybody. I only came to inform the both of you. I am not going back to that house. And you push, you better be ready to accommodate me in my father's house. That's all. Come and get your bag. That's because you spoiled her. <laughs> what do I do? I tried my best. <laughs> she grow up. She's <laughs> really a child. Really? Mm? Please don't take to what she told you. Eh? No, no, grow. I'm used to her. So what are you going to do about her situation right now? I do. I mean, it's still too early for them to, to be going like this. Welcome to my house. Oh, wow. For a young man of my age, this is where I live. Quite great. Nice. Yeah. And that is exactly what I was telling you. See, the only thing I want from you is to be dedicated to me. Oh. I mean, to be there for me, you know? Love me, and I, and I will love you too. I promise I'll take care of anything that is your need. Your welfare, your school fees, whatever it is, I'll take care of it. Because really? if you know me better, there's a lot that you will enjoy. Oh. Okay? But um, how about the other girls? Don't tell me, I mean, you don't have any other girl because you need someone to help you clean the house cook your food and then you know for a guy like you your status the house and the cars come on well that is the most interesting part of my life i don't have time for women yes truthfully look apart from my mother and my sisters you're the only one that has come to this house to visit me before because uh i practically don't have no time and you know that's why you're special you see that's to show you how reserved I am. I'm a very reserved guy. So you have nothing to worry about. Hmm? Just do everything I tell you. Do you understand? Be there for me and I'll be there for you. Okay. Okay? Let's go inside, okay? I'm so shocked you can contemplate having an affair with Sylvester after all he did to your sister. Mama, I'm not having any affair with Sylvester. Then what are you always doing in his house? Avoiding your fiancé instead of avoiding the deceiver. Mama, why should I avoid Sylvester? 
If he had a failed relationship with my sister, so what? How does he concern? My dear, it concerns you. The whole world will laugh at us. They will look at us as irresponsible family, people without principles. Mama, I've not agreed to any relationship with Sylvester. He's only expressing the love he has for our family, and I don't see anything wrong with that. You think I don't know about the series of shopping and the money he gives to you? What Mama. are you up to this time? Why are you disgracing me? Why can't I be allowed to live my life the way I want it? I am an adult. Besides, Richard is always broke. You want me to cope with that for the rest of my life? I prefer a man that is always broke oh, than that deceiver Sylvester. All he's working out now is to sleep with you and then abandon you. Mama, it's not as if I'm taking over my sister's husband. They don't have anything else in common again. Besides, my sister is married. So why am I being punished for her sake? Married later this year. So, what is this all about? I've changed my mind. I don't want to marry again. Free marriages is enough in a man's life. I want to spend the rest of my life quietly and without any burden. Desmond, you must be joking. You gave me hope all these years. For five good years, you deprived me of every other relationship. You practically scared me away from me. And now, at 36 years, you're going to start all over. I did not add to your years, Annabelle. We get older by the day, and there is nothing we can do about it. I was 50 years when I met you, now I'm 55. You had fun while it lasted, so that's why I'm giving you this 2 million naira. So take it and let's stop discussion on it. You can do this to me. Keep your stupid mind. interested in the marriage. 
and that it was fun while it lasted. That is ridiculous. Did you guys quarrel or something? Not at all. Uche, you know me very well. I practically worship your father. I don't know, maybe he thinks it's all about the money. But God knows that I fell in love with him without knowing who he was then. But rather than appreciate my sincere feelings for him, he took advantage of me. And now what, what do I have back in return? He just messed me up and... Mm. It's okay, Annabelle, it's all right. Please relax and have. You know, that can be erratic sometimes. I'll talk to him when he's calm, okay? That won't be necessary, Jay. You know your father. Once he makes up his mind about something, he doesn't go back on it. Who knows, he probably has a brain in his trap right now. But is that enough reason for him to treat me this way? Is it? Are you going to the office? Oh yes, I have a case this morning, so I'm running off to the court. Okay, can I see my wife? Hmm, I'll be now. You know, I was wondering, in this day and time, why would you beat up your wife? I didn't beat up my wife, Barista Kamsi, I didn't. If you did not beat up your wife, then why did she leave your house? You see, we had a banal quarrel over my phone before I left for the office. And she packed her things and left. Is that right? Anyway, Obina, I would, you know, advise that, you know, you coordinate yourself or your businesses in such a manner that it does not interfere with your family life. That is very important. My business is not interfering in my family life. It is your sister, Kichi. I have warned her to lay off my phone, but she refused. She abandoned her duty as my wife. I keep poking in my privacy. Privacy? Yes. Don't I have right to privacy? <laughs> Obina. There is no such thing as privacy. Look, you and your wife are married. You are together. 
Obina, there is no smoke without fire. At least advise your girls to call at appropriate times in such a manner that it will not affect you and your wife, your family. Is that what she told you, my girls? <laughs> well, I'm not here to entertain unnecessary blames. Well, I have to be on my way. I will see you guys when you're in the right frame of mind. Receive me. Obina? Hello, I, I thought... I really don't know what is going on. The young man came here and we had a discussion. And I told him that it wasn't right for him to have done what he did to my sister. You know? And then he just got angry and said he was leaving. I'm saying, what did he do? Huh? What did he do now? What do you mean, what did he do? Did I tell you he did anything to me? Mama, are you perceiving trouble now? Why did she confront him now? My husband came here to take me back home and all she did was chase me away. Ah! What, what is this girl talking about? I wonder. Now what, what nonsense is she saying here? I don't understand. Mom, were you not here yesterday when this girl said her husband beat her to stupor and that she was not going back to him? <laughs> Mama! No! Mama, are you seeing now? No, but you can see it. Can you see it? Anyway, I don't blame you. Ah, no, I don't blame you at all. When you are not married, you will know how painful it is for one to lose a husband. You will know now. That's why you, you chased him away. Mama, shut up, Ukechi. Shut up. You know, Mom, I don't have time for this this morning. I have to be in the court. When I get back, I will address this. Come see. Mom, Mom. Mom. Um, see how she, why did she come on to you? Did I say you don't need Will you stop acting like a fool? Are you still a baby? Eh? Here, Mama, what did I do? You are the cause of the whole confusion here. Look at you. Eh? You, are, you want to blame others for your for, for your faults and failures. This of you to, 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 to face your duties as a wife. You are busy reading your husband's text messages. Your sister is only trying to protect you and now you are blaming her. Grow up! Look okay, at you, grow up! You're no longer a kid, you're, you're a married woman! No, mama, wait! No, 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 mama, just relax. Are you blaming me now? I'm just asking, I want to know if you are blaming me now for what happened just now. She chased him away. Somebody who came to take me back home, she drove him away. No, mama, are you blaming me? Oh, I'm not a lawyer, now, mama. Because Kamsi is a lawyer, and I am not a lawyer. That is why you are blaming me for everything that happens. But no problem. Because I didn't I was in my husband's house. I won't hear what I just heard now. You just realized that, eh? Mama! Mama! This girl. in this house, but they don't know it yet. Haven't you seen the way they maltreat us in this house? It's because Kamsi looks like mom, and you and I look like dad. That's why they treat us like that. I mean, sister. Oh, you forgot to. <laughs> we are not lawyers. You are not a lawyer. I am not a lawyer. That's why everything she does is right. Mom is so passionate about that. That's what they are always doing. She and mom. Just because of color. Color difference, so you look like dad, I look like mom. Don't let them influence you. Just don't let them influence you at all. Don't allow them influence you. Yes, don't allow anybody influence you at all with their ITK character. Yes, sure you know, you and I will look like that. Kamsi looks like mom. That is why mom is so passionate about Kamsi. Everything Kamsi does is right. I am going. I'll be coming to visit you. Bye bye. I'm going to my husband's house. So I don't get to hear the things I don't want to hear. Bye bye.
if you know more. I'm trying to. Oh, oh, come on. What? Oh. Oh. Yes. Uh, if you. Are you still around? Yeah, I just. I, I thought you have gone. Huh? Come on, kid sister. So you slept off after I left? Instead of going home to help Mama and Papa? That's not fair. Uh, anyway, uh, come, I want you to be summer. Um, Ajay, uh, I want you to meet my fiance. Ijoma, Ijoma, that's uh, my, my kid sister. Yeah, from, from my, my, my papa, my mama's side. My mama's side, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, Ify, you know what? You help me go to the market now and pick up some stuff so that I can prepare a lovely meal for my darling. Okay, I hope you don't mind. Come on, come, come. Um, I'll make you a list right now, so come with me so that I can write down. <laughs> All right, uh, baby, let me just make a list of what she's going to buy. Uh, I'll be back soon. Okay, just a moment. So. Uh, I'm sorry about that, my love. Uh, wait, wait, wait. What is wrong? Baby, are you angry? Ah, don't tell me you think she's my girlfriend or something. Of course she's your girlfriend. You promised this won't happen in our relationship. You know people don't approve of us because of what you did to my sister. And I just decided to take the chance. And now you even have a living lover. What? Who are you talking about? If he is just my cousin who normally comes to my house to help me in cooking and stuff. <laughs> Look, she was meant to leave after cooking. Believe me. They, they live in uh, Lodia Park. Oh, I might be naive, but I'm not a dunce. I know a sister when I see one, and that girl is your lover, so don't deny it. Why are you talking about her? She even has the key to your apartment. No, no, no. You're getting this whole thing wrong, baby. Look, the entrance door has a jam lock. So all she needs to do is to open it from behind and close it back. And there, it is locked. You can confirm from her when she comes out. Baby, look. You have to believe me, huh? You, you, it's time you, you start trusting me because we can't build this relationship without trust, huh? I'm sorry. sorry. Don't touch me. You, oh, you're ready, yeah? Okay, just make sure you get everything on the list. Mm -hmm. And please, take your time, okay? Because uh, my baby is not in a hurry. No problem. Okay, um, IJ, you're welcome to our house anytime, okay? And I mean, you had fun here, okay? But um, please don't mind me. I'm just a jealous cousin, so I hope you don't mind. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's okay, I understand. All right. So I'll see you guys, okay? All right. Bye. Okay, bye. Mm -hmm. All right, easy on Okada, eh? Okay. treating me like I'm worth nothing to you. Why? Is it because you know I'm an orphan and no one is willing to pay my fees? Is that the reason? I mean, I could actually, I could, I could quit school just to end this whole humiliation. You know? I could, I could become a prostitute and, I mean, even a prostitute has... Stop it. Stop it. If you, why are you sounding like this? Because of that little thing that happened the other day, is that why you're saying all this? You call that a little thing, right? You call that a little thing. 
I mean, this is not the first time. Neither is it the second. I mean, since you've gotten a wife, why don't you leave me to go in peace? Leave me alone. God. Wife, you did. Who told you I was going to marry that vain, greedy girl? Huh? Look. Okay. All right. Let me give you the story. I had something to do with her sister. I mean, I dated her sister a long time ago. And since we broke up, her family has been castigating me. So I wanted my pound of flesh. And I'm now the pawn you want to use to achieve your desires? God, I want nothing to you. I'm what less than a dog, is it? If he just... No. Please, stop, stop saying all this. Hmm? Baby, look, you what? You what a lot to me. A lot. <laughs> and, and, and I promise you. Don't touch me. Baby, I'll make it up to you. <laughs> I promise. Okay? Alright, for a start, I will double up your allowance. I don't need it. I don't. I mean, if that would make you treat me like a human being for once, I really don't need it. Okay. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, okay? I'm trying my best, huh? okay? But, but just accept it, okay? Accept it, it's from my heart. I promise I won't watch you again. Okay? I love you so much. <laughs> sorry. Okay, okay, calm down, man. calm down. I want you to come to bed. Okay, since you started this campaign, so how do you feel? Oh, it feels great, and I, I we want to thank God um, Almighty at um, Hope for the Hopeless Foundation for His enormous um, love and um, grace that He has given us. So, um, for every um, case we have won, we just want to give more the glory. It's been worth it. All right. Apart from finance, what are the other areas of your challenge? Oh, we've got a lot of challenges. We have received death threats. Yes. We get um, letters um, of blackmail, all manners of uh, people trying to destabilize us. But we have remained steadfast and we are not going to back down in this course. And we want to use this opportunity also to thank the press people who have stood by us in our fight. We want to say thank you much and God bless you. Thank thank you. Thank you. So, you may be getting married to the youngest son in the country. How does that make you feel? Great. Definitely. At least with your support. I am sure it will come to pass. Mm, well, you're lucky. I wasn't lucky. In my youth, um, I desired a strong woman beside me, but I never had one. I only had uh, weaklings. But mom wasn't a weakling, was she? Ah, neither was she a tigress. Just like you. Yes, I often told you they need to be stronger. And after that, the rest were worse. I hate it when a woman has no mind or voice of her own. I hate being worshipped. Well, um, I actually thought you hated being challenged. I hate being challenged by a fool. I hate it when a zebra suddenly pretends to be a tiger. But you're lucky. Your woman is a tiger. You can go to sleep with two guys close. But I have to warn you. You have to be very careful. Else she will turn into the woman of the house. My son cannot afford to be a good limited tiger. It 
was another historical day at the State High Court, where Barrister Kamze Amade, founder of the Hope for the Hopeless Foundation, won her seventh consecutive case. It was a case involving one Mrs. Okpayemi Arishikola, who was wrongfully dispossessed of her entitlement as the wife of the late Mr. Vincent Arishikola and her seven month old baby. Uh, yeah. But Barrister Kamze Amade, representing her, overturned all that. Justice Inam de Wampo ordered the immediate restoration of all her rights and privileges, including her young baby. With this victory, it is being speculated in the legal quarters that Barrister Kamzi Amadi, at 28, may be at the verge of becoming the youngest senior advocate in the country. Meanwhile, a group known as Women's Rights Group, Nigerian chapter, has congratulated this brilliant lawyer and pledge their support and assistance to her noble cause. There will be more in the news after the break. <sighs> wow. Yes. Hello? Obi? Yeah, what's up, man? <laughs> I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Oh man, guess what? I just saw someone now. Yeah, your, your sister-in-law, Kamsi. Yeah, Barrister Kamsi. I saw her on the screen now. Some aftermath of some case and I think she won. She actually won. Mm-hmm. Oh boy. Man, she is hot! Hey, and you know I've always had my eye on her, man. Yeah? <laughs> what? Oh please, which what nonsense fiance? What does he have to offer? Huh? Is he loaded? Look, I'm not talking about boys that spend their father's money. I'm, I mean guys that spend real money just like me. Hard earned money, baby. Look, it's, it's not my problem. It's not my problem. Uh, can we hook up tonight? Hmm? This evening, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Man, I have to make it move fast. I can't wait, man. I, I really like what I'm seeing. <laughs> we'll talk on it when I come in, okay? Yes. Alright, alright, alright. See you, man. Wow. That wouldn't be a bad step. Married to a barrister at law. Sounds nice. <laughs> you know. Better packaging and class. Hmm. Yes, 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 yes. That's the right step. Like this, huh? Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, um, let me 
have like five of this. Okay? Five. All right. I have some. Five or six. So I hope you'll be visiting us very soon again. Oh, no, 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 don't mention, madam. I will always be here. Okay, I hope you still see more of you. Oh, sure, you will, you will. Okay. My regards to everybody, everybody in the house. Eh? Okay? Especially Kamsi, the greatest barista of our time. She'll be here. Thank you, thank you. So, bye-bye. Right, thank you, eh? You have a nice day. I'm uh, going to the car. security reason. I don't want anybody to know that um, I even met you. My name is Chie Rechiro, a widow. Madam, you should have brought this to my office. I do not attend to cases in my house. This is my private residence. I can't afford to. Please, that is why I first apologize. My case is special. Like I said earlier, there is security risk involved. Please. What please. security risk is involved? Madam, please. Could you kindly go straight to no. the point and quickly too? As you can see, it is very late and I'm quite tired. Yeah. Very tired. Thank you. My tormentor is wicked, ruthless, and uh, very influential. He's a killer. But everybody thinks that he's a saint. He killed my husband and my only son to acquire our acres of land. He has his eyes everywhere. He must not know that I met you. That is why I refuse to come to your office during the day. Please, my daughter, please. Is that your file? Yes. Everything you need to know is signed up, written by me. Go through it. If you decide to take up these challenges, please, if you know that you can handle it, call me. My telephone number is there. 
even my international passport. Once again, I'm so sorry for barging into your house. It's okay. I'll go through it and I'll call you. Good night. Nice. Right. Thank you so much. Yes. morning. Um, madam, you were the one that came to my house last night and dropped an orange file with some documents in it. Yes, my name is Kamsi. Kamsi Amadi. Good. All right. Um, I need to see you. Urgently. Yes, I, I know, I know. I, I, I already figured that out. Um, can we see by 8 p.m. today? At my office, please. I will be alone in my office by 8 p.m. on the dot, waiting for you. I need you to come to my office unnoticed. Can you do that? Like, change two or three cars on your way here and make sure no one sees you. Good, I will be waiting for you by 8 on the dot. See you then.
Get to know about this organization. Last week, when I came back from Cotton, I had to leave Nigeria to go to stay with my sister in Cotton after my money period. <laughs> Are you really sure that the man we're talking about here is really Chief Desmond Igwe, the industrialist? The philanthropist? Exactly the man. He was my husband's classmate and friend. You seem to know him very well. Oh, well, he's a public figure. You know, if you know him that well, you should know about his family. Tell me about his family. I need every detail that I can gather. So I, I can, you can help me decide on this case. He has uh, four children from three different wives. His first son lives here in Nigeria, Uche, and uh, the rest are abroad. His first wife died ten years ago. Since then, he has married about two other wives, but none of the marriages were worked. This case is not like any of the others that I have handled before. It is different. You allege that Chief Desmond Igwe murdered your husband and your only son to acquire your plots of land. This is a murder case. It is not within the scope of my operation. But for some curious reasons, I will investigate. Ah, yes, I will. And I will let you know what my next line of action is. Anything you need for me to do to bring this killer to book, I will get it for you to Like I said earlier on, she this small baby was my husband's classmate at the university. They married at about the same time. I knew him as a family friend, though we were not too close. When he became very rich, the two families almost drifted apart. I remember some time ago when my husband approached him for a loan to revive his business, he refused to help my husband. You see, my husband invested so much on the empty plots of land. He refused to sell even when things were really tough for us. Suddenly, so early last year, Chief this monster visiting our colleagues and food that And that was very, very unusual. Very unusual. All over you. Yeah. I hear your children are all abroad now. Yes, you're correct. They're all there taking care of themselves. Uh, you see, so I'm here taking care of myself. Love the song. You have to. Uh, that's. Um, that's yes. Yeah, okay. Oh, Chidi. Yeah, you're now a big man. You know. <laughs> you're, ma you're a man now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> actually, in the university. He's a solid engineering, but actually uh, electrical engineering. That's nice. Uh, I, you know, one of my companies, uh, you know, is an engineering firm too. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that, that makes 
basically last night. So yes. I love that. I love that. Yeah. Uh, that's good. Uh, okay. Oh, thank you, my son. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you. All right. I have been in my room upstairs. Okay. Excuse me. All right. <laughs> that's, that's nice, at least uh, you're you giving him uh, good training. I love that. I love Yes. <laughs> Never can say. It. No, no, Chief, yes. I'm surprised to see you in our house today. Oh, why should you be surprised that a friend visits a friend? Well, it has been quite a while. Even when I call you on phone, you pretend not to know the color. There was a time my son wanted to see you, but you made your cell phone available. I don't know why. Oh, come on, come on. Don't, don't talk like that. You know what it is here in the city? Everybody is busy running helter skelter to make ends meet. That you refuse to pick our calls? Not that, not that. Okay, from now onwards, if you want to see me, come straight to my house. Really? Yes, don't bother calling first. Okay? Good. Uh, well, maybe circumstances separated us for a while, but... We are now back together, you know, like those good old days. <laughs> yeah. You know, we men, we don't keep malice. Uh, am I right, Tony? Oh, sure, sure. Good. I love a man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, let me make one promise now. As soon as your son is through with his education, I will employ him in one of my companies. Really? Thank you. Yes, that'll be fine. I, I won't allow him to go through that process of um, job seeking and uh, interviews and what have you. Thank you so much. And uh, let me just uh, appreciate you. You're, you're keeping the environment very clean. That's nice. That's Thank you. I'll do it to you. I won't do it badly. Besides, everybody. Everybody's fine. Everybody's yeah. fine. Everybody. I want to go to our house again. This man is getting close to you these days. It looks like he wants something from you. He has been here three times in the past one month. Or are you people discussing any business? Not really. It's just that he wants a reunion. We used to be good friends before he became big and scarce. I would be surprised if it's just about a reunion. There must be an ulterior motive that has to do with money. Don't tell me he has not mentioned it, anything else. Of course he has, but it's not something I can help him out with. What does he want? Um, don't worry, it's not important. Um, it's just man-to-man -man talk. Man-to-man -man talk? And you think I don't deserve to know? Of course, you will at the appropriate time. Um, actually, I have an appointment with him before 9 o'clock in the morning. Maybe when I come back, I'll give you a lowdown of all we have been discussing.
um, I know it would be impossible for anyone to make you forget the tragic death of your husband and your son the same night. I waited this long after the funeral just to give you time to rest and recuperate. See, you have to pull yourself together, together, okay? Life is for the living. Um, yes. I have uh, two checks here. Uh, this is for 500,000. Yes, take it. That is my personal contribution mm -hmm. for you to take good care of yourself. Thank you very much, but you have contributed to the funeral. Oh, come on. What? There's nothing I would do for my friend that is too much. See, your husband was my classmate and a good friend. In fact, it pains me that I was not able to help him while he was alive. Um, but all is well. Uh, all is well, okay? Here is another check for one million naira. Yeah, this is a purely business. Okay. Yes. Your husband and I had a land transaction and the value of the business was ten million naira. I already paid him nine million naira. So this is the balance. Nine million naira. Yeah, I paid him shortly before he died. He never mentioned such transaction to me. Let alone such amount of money. Um, well, you know we may you know how we behave. Uh, maybe he wanted to give it to you as a surprise. Actually, I've already signed that agreement. The land is located um, along Badagi. And uh, yes, he has given me this check for the This is a receipt for nine million naira for the one I pay. That's the receipt. into acres of land and can't be sold for anything less than 50 million naira. So if your hunch is right, that means Chief Desmond paid only 1 million naira? My hunch never failed me. The moment Chief Desmond started frequenting our house, I had this strong feeling that something was going to go wrong. I never imagined such tragedy. Where did you say you found the land document again? One of the drawers. One of the drawers? And you allege that one of the assassins actually dropped the land document in the drawer? My husband would have kept such documents in that kind of drawer. It's an important document. And I'm sure I actually saw one of the Robbers deposit that document. Are you sure? I'm very sure. In your case file, you wrote that the 9 million naira that was alleged to have been paid your husband for the parcels of land never reflected anywhere. See, that there's no such money anywhere. Not in his account, nor as cash. And the so called robbers left with nothing. I 
and I heard so much about you. And I'm convinced that you can handle this case. If bringing this killer to book is the last thing I achieve in this world, I will die a happy woman. It's part of my tragedies. Don't you worry I don't go. 